Hi guys, welcome to day 15 of our advent calendar and today we're going to look at some really beautiful paints. So these can be found in the paintandpaperstudio.com, uh, the shop on there. And so they were sent to me by Zandra. Some were sent by Zandra and some were sent by Patty. So they're two friends and Patty came up with the formula and Zandra sells them in her shop. So I was a little bit reluctant reluctant to receive them um, just because I'm always so busy and I do you, you guys know I like to give you the pros and cons of a product so I didn't you know want to feel like there was any pressure to uh, you know give a certain review but they were really lovely and they just said that they were just sending them as a fellow youtuber and just in a friendly gesture so I just received them and I have to tell you I am so impressed by these colors and you can see how beautifully and easily they re-wet here. So, and I believe this rose gold color is a similar color to the one I used to very first um, use in the really cheap palette from Michaels that I, I've talked about before. I can't remember what it's called, but it's usually like hanging on the hook at the end of an aisle. And it's just like a really $5 palette you can get with a coupon. And it's just got a heap of metallic colors in. But that's where I started and... Um, I loved it and I think that that is a similar color so I've always been looking for a more professional grade um, color and I and I believe that's it so anyway let's get into these colors so this first one here is called mermaid lagoon and I don't have any pigment information but I think it's like a phthalo blue um, mixed with a sparkle so you can see kind of the water's getting very stained there and phthalo blue is not generally a color that I gravitate towards but this one is so gorgeous so I really just even love having the half pan uh you know sometimes like it the pastels on my desk I, I love things that inspire me to create and that's definitely one when you see it in the half pan you sort of are shocked at how beautiful it is so I'm a little bit behind here this one right here is called magic green so again you can see it's a beautiful um consistency they're like buttery they're a bit different to other watercolors that i've tried but they're really lovely to use um and so the second one there so not the one i'm swatching now but the one the previous one that is called pacific lagoon and with the rose gold those two are my absolute favorites out of the colors so we will look at those in a painting for day 16 so the next video will be a painting of a shoe and we will use that those colors so they're really gorgeous actually i think we use some of the mermaid lagoon in the painting as well so here uh this one is the magic sun gold i believe and i think this is the same color as the next two as well so uh, I, th I just swatched them all uh, anyway, but I think these three sort of yellowy gold ones are pretty much the same color. I've always wanted to try the Daniel Smith Interference Gold, and I believe that this is sort of a more luxurious version of that. So you can see like they're really stunning. And you guys know my top three favorite shops are uh, Nibs Watercolors, um, Rivervale watercolors and colors of the iron range and now I really love these ones as well and you can see that I have taken the Christmas colors out of this little palette and put these ones in here so these will probably stay in here long term I might add in a couple of extra colors or change out a couple of these golds but uh, this I'm, I'm really loving this little palette So the other thing I wanted to say was, I know I'm a little bit behind with the videos and everything, so I'm trying to get out two today to make up for yesterday. Um, and I had wanted to, so I'm, what I'm saying is I'm not sure about giving you video information ahead of time. So um, but I'm, I'm still trying to work on it. I'm just shuffling things around every day to see what I can handle that day so if i need a shorter video or a longer video so um we'll sort of play it by ear i had hoped to have a lot of this already you know re-filmed and sort of so i was a bit ahead of schedule but that just didn't really happen 
But anyway, I just wanted to let you know because I know a lot of you have really been enjoying and looking forward to the daily video. So I apologize for that. Um, and I will do what I can. But um, so this one is the rose gold. And this is the one I was talking about that there was a color I always loved using from that um, the palette. And this is such a beautiful version of that color. So those are all the ones from Paper and Paint Studio. And then these two here were already in this half, this uh, palette. So the one that I'm going to swatch for you now is the uh, Coat Dazor Violet. So I have this in here actually. I really love this color. I have this in here because I wasn't sure if I would be able to get another half pan of this. And so I've wanted to just keep this and not use it. But I can see that the colors of the Iron Range has one. So... I feel a lot more comfortable now to um, use this and be able to replace it. So this is a little bit lighter than the Violet Porphyry and you can see it's got a little bit of grain in it. So I really, really love this color. So this one here is, I think it's the Antique Silver from Earth Mineral Arts. You can see that I'm putting a lot of water on it. Over the time I have put a lot of water in, in that half pan and it's still quite hard to re-wet. You can see though, it just gives sort of a soft, more natural sparkle. So um, I, I do like it. And I use this actually in my Fisherman's Pearl journals on the color wheel. I used this uh, because I, I feel like it reminds me sort of of the beach and the sand. So it is a beautiful color. It's fairly expensive. It's not necessarily one, unless you really knew you wanted it for a project, it's not necessarily one I would say, you know, definitely you need. Like I said, it's very hard to re-wet and it is more something for a special project. But I do love having it in this palette and kind of deepening and rounding out this palette. And this is kind of, I guess it's a little bit of a coastal mermaid type palette. So, I will link the um, Colors of the Iron Range shop as well in the comments and the Earth Mineral Arts and the Paint and Paper Studio. And also, if you have been waiting for Colors of the Iron Range to bring back the Thulite, they are going to bring that color back. So I am so excited about that. That means I can use it more often and not be afraid to run out. So it's one of my favorites and it will be in my 2020 favorite watercolors video that's going to come out I believe the week between Christmas and New Year I'd like to do that video if I can and when we get back to the festival of color so you can see there the up close texture of the Cote d'Azur I really love that color it's not a saturated color it's just a really soft uh, beautiful violet earth color and I'm just trying to show you here how these colors glimmer in the light so it's kind of like its own light show. It's really pretty. So you can see that they don't have a whole lot of uh, color pigment to them until you hit the light on them. But um, you can mix all these. So for example, the Magic Lagoon, or is that what it's called? The Mermaid Lagoon, the first color with, is like one of these shimmer colors mixed with a phthalo blue. So you mix any of these shimmer colors with your regular, more saturated watercolors. And you'll end up with these really beautiful shimmery undertones or overtones. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say was I'm not sure how they glaze. You know, I, I know a lot of um, handmade watercolor reviewers like to try, you know, and test their glazing capabilities. And I don't necessarily um, worry too much about that. I, I want the color payoff. So... I work around the characteristics of the color so I haven't tried these for glazing but for example if they don't glaze well uh, I would use them on the top glaze or you know mix them with a color that I want to glaze you know use to glaze the top layer or I'll just use them in an area of the painting where I don't um, need to glaze and that's not to say I mean these might glaze perfectly well that's just my thing for any watercolors so I'm always working around the characteristics of you know whatever color I'm using so I hope that makes sense and I will see you guys in the next video bye